Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel, and I'm a professor of migration studies, and this is a channel about all things migration. So we're gonna to continue today with our country case with our country case study looking specifically at Afghanistan. In the first video, you were able to watch the history of migration in Afghanistan, and now we're going to turn to migration policy in Afghanistan. So there are a number of organizations that actually work on migration governance in Afghanistan. Migration policies in Afghanistan are organized and implemented through partnerships between the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and often several international organizations. The most important of these parties then are the Ministry of Refugees and Repatriation, on the Afghan government side, as well as the International Organization for Migration and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, or UNHCR, on the UN side. Now, migration already shows up in the national development strategy of the country. And in 2008, the government of, Af of Afghanistan approved a national development strategy for the period 2008 to 2013, where displacement and reintegration of returnees were included as, ex and as, as an explicit focus for the social and economic development of Afghanistan. The current strategy, which follows the period of 2017 to 2021, um, the national, sorry, the Afghan National Peace and Development Framework does not address issues related to displacement and reintegration separately but it does acknowledge the need to provide durable solutions to displacement and to include measures in favor of returning refugees in existing development programs. So really they went from a development program looking at migration and specifically refugees separately to now really kind of mainstreaming it into their general development programming. There are some new migration policies that have started to come to fruition in the country. Recently, between around 2019 and 2020, the Comprehensive Migration Policy for Afghanistan was created, and implementation of this policy will begin in 2021. There are three key policy areas in this document and in this policy framework. The first is on return and reintegration. The second is on regular migration. And the third is on migration and development. And now the government is working more and more on these areas to be able to implement each of the areas. Additionally, there is also an Afghan national diaspora engagement policy for the advancement of Afghanistan, which is for the period 2021 to 2030. Now this was drafted by the Interministerial Committee on Diaspora Affairs. Now there are a number of also of other key institutions that work on migration issues and are also part of the comprehensive migration policy for the country. So of course the first key institution is the Ministry of Refugees and Repatriation. The ministry's mission is to manage affairs related to immigration, refuge, repatriation and sustainable settlement, to provide legal and societal services for refugees returnees and internally displaced persons, and to attract national and international cooperation. In 2015, MORR established a High Commissioner for Refugees with the purpose of bringing coordination at the national level in order to facilitate honorable, gradual, and volunteer repatriation of refugees, asylum seekers, and IDPs, and their sustainable resettlement and reintegration in proportion to, existing, to the existing capacities in the country. Another clear goal was to manage immigration affairs, to provide legal and societal support to refugees and returnees, and attract national and international cooperation, particularly in the countries hosting refugees. Now, other key institutions are the High Commissioner for Migration, the Council of Ministers Subcommittee on Migration Affairs, um, the Displacement and Returnees Executive Committee that are all very much involved in migration, there are a number of other key ministries that are also involved in, uh, um, in the migration policy for the country. These are the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing and Azizi, the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, 
the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Independent Directorate of Local Government Governance, the Deputy Ministry of Municipalities, the Afghan Border Police, the Ministry of Re Rural Rehabilitation and Development, the Ministry of Justice and the High Commission to Combat Human Trafficking and Migrant Smuggling, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Higher Education, the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrig Irrigation and Livestock, Livestock, the Ministry of Public Health, the Ministry of Border and Tribal Affairs, and the Afghan Natural Disaster Management Authority. So really a number of different agencies and ministries that are involved or need to be involved in the Afghan migration policy. Now the two key migration organizations also dealing under, that fall under the UN um, that we've talked about already are the IOM and UNHCR. IOM has been present in Afghanistan since 1992 and is one of the largest IOM missions worldwide. IOM facilitates programs to provide emergency and post-conflict migration management services in Afghanistan, as well as to provide assistance-based um, re research to guide and inform migration policy. IOM actively coordinates the provision of post-arrival humanitarian assistance to returning undocumented Afghans from the Islamic Republic of Iran and Pakistan, as well as returns from Europe. And since, 2000 and I, since 2008, IOM has provided emergency uh, NFIs and shelter alongside community level disaster mitigation measures and early warning systems. And since 2017, IOM has been carrying out in-depth data collection on returnee and IDP mobility patterns through its displacement tracking matrix in an effort to provide policymakers with evidence to support efficient and effective deliver, delivery of assistance and programming. So IOM has a number of different programs in Afghanistan. They have humanitarian programming, they have migration management programming, and they have more general migration policy programming. So under humanitarian programming, programming they have the cross-border return and reintegration, which gives post-arrival assistance to vulnerable undocumented Afghans returning specifically from Iran and Pakistan. Then they also have the Humanitarian Assistance Program, which responds to the emergency and recovery needs of rural disaster affected communities. And then they have a protection programming. And this program aims to strengthen national and cross-border protection mechanisms and provide tailored assistance to those in need. Now turning to migration management, they have been running the Assisted Voluntary Return and Reintegration Program for many, many years for migrants coming back mainly from Europe, but also other countries. They also have the Counter Trafficking in Persons Program or the CTIP Program, which includes prevention, technical co cooperation and victim protection. They also have reintegration assistance and development in Afghanistan, which is to support the sustainable reintegration and of returnees within their communities of return. And they also have a program on migration and development to facilitate the return as well as temporary returns of qualified Afghan diaspora since 2001. So there are a number of different programs that actually fall under the migration and development program. They, under migration policy, as I've already said, they collect data through the migration policy research and displacement tracking matrix to also help go into feeding better program and policy making. There's also a regional consultative process that the IOM supports. Um, so the IOM supports the Afghan government to participate in several processes for informal and non-binding dialogue and information exchange on migration related issues. Turning to UNHCR in Afghanistan, the main responsibility of UNHCR in Afghanistan is to ensure the voluntary, safe and dignified return of Afghans from abroad, advocating for the, return, re the reintegration of Afghan returnees and working with the government and other stakeholders to gather information and build policy on inter internally displaced persons. And operationally, UNHCR assists returnees and IDPs with cash grants, shelter, non-food items, and livelihood interventions. 
The overarching framework for action is a solution strategy for Afghan refugees, which was approved in 2014 after consultation with Afghan policymakers and international actors. And the aim is to increase support to host communities while ensuring sustainable return and reintegration. And this is mainly focused on Iran and uh, Pakistan. UNHCR also provides services to Afghan refugees in Pakistan and Iran, and this includes returning the, re, the sorry, this includes running the refugee camps in Pakistan and providing voluntary return centers in both countries. Now, there's also been quite a lot of diaspora involvement in Afghanistan. The majority of Afghan migrants and refugees are in Iran and Pakistan. And this is kind of considered the near diaspora, but there's also a much quote unquote wider diaspora located in other countries further abroad. And that includes countries like Australia, Austria, Denmark, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And there's a large portion of these um, more wide diaspora now that are based in Germany, Turkey, and the United States. So members of the diaspora receive, have received ministerial positions. Former President Karzai and the current president spent significant times in the U.S. and in other countries. Since uh, the overthrow of the Taliban regime, the Afghan diaspora groups have been uniting on their own to get involved in the reconstruction effort. And in also in many cases, uh, they have the diaspora groups have gotten together, also assisted by programs and other hosting governments. Moreover, there are also four key programs established to engage the Afghan diaspora. While there are also a number of other programs, the World Bank allocated $1.5 million for a fund to hire qualified Afghans to return to Afghanistan and, and assist in reconstruction efforts. The World Bank Afghanistan Directory of Expertise is a database of skilled Afghans and non-Afghans with experience in Afghanistan. And this database has served to co connect many qualified individuals with projects in Afghanistan. IOM established a temporary return of qualified nationals program to engage the Afghan diaspora in returning temporary, temporarily to work on training and capacity building projects. Um, this, this program has also, at least in the context of the Netherlands, become connecting diaspora for development and, si and runs similarly to the previous program. The Swiss Peace Foundation has established an internet forum to create dialogue between civil society, the diaspora, and the government regarding peace in Afghanistan. And there are a number of other initiatives, but this just gives um, a, a small idea. There are also a number of agreements on voluntary return now to Afghanistan. So there are tripartite agreements between Afghanistan, UNHCR and destination countries on voluntary return of Afghan refugees, which lays down the scope, objectives, and methodology also for repatriation. And there are a number of bilateral, bilateral agreements between Afghanistan and destination countries to regulate the migration flows and strengthen bilateral relations. So I hope this gives you just a quick understanding of the current migration policy and governance in Afghanistan. Um, if you're interested in more, you can also have a look at the new migration policy, the new comprehensive migration policy for Afghanistan that will be rolled out very soon. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss any other videos. And please feel free to share this video with any colleagues or friends that you think might find this video interesting. I hope to see you next time. Take care.